they work for the corporation and do that. A little bit later. Uh, then you look, say, is it my volume or yours? I'm barely hearing you a little bit. Oh, can you hear me now? Hold on, hold on. Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So what I was saying, um, is it depends on who you're speaking to, what, what set, what set of uh, maroons you're speaking to in Jamaica. You know, some will tell you they're our wax and they're our wax only, none of this foolishness or mm-hmm. Pico Indians or Mosquito Indians, you know, um, and others may tell you, say they're African, which is lies. So what I was basically saying, I could pull up the documentation of when they sent the Trelawney Maroons to Nova Scotia and Sierra Leone. I've got that. It's archived. So they can't be chatting no foolishness for those who want to believe that, they, that the Maroons are Af- not African. Those that telling you this are chatting rubbish. They work for the corporation of Jamaica because Jamaica is a corporation. Like they they all the rest still of need to tell the truth though. Because as I, I say, a lot, them, a lot of them people say. Actual. Actual. But they, they do know, but they're, just, they're, playing, they're playing stupid. You know, they even call themselves maroons, they call themselves simaroons, and you ask them what tribe you come from, they know, because I, spe- I speak to loads of them, and I said, I'm Arawak in, they said, yeah, 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 me know, so am I. I speak, I speak to some over here, I said, what are you, Arawak? I said, yeah, they're very wise, not many people know that. I said, yeah, because you're not telling them that. The majority of maroon people, maroons are not telling people who they really are. Maybe because they sign contract with foreigners not to tell our people who we really are, you know. Maybe. Think about that. But go ahead, Mr. Braver. I know you want to say something, I'll cut you off. You know. So, I mean, it's a game people play, man. Like I said before, like what Braver said, and many other West Indies have stated. Okay, he come off. Okay, we'll wait for him to come back. Um, not everybody who looks like us come from where we come from are our king folks. That some of them are the sellouts. Facts. You know. And they're there, to, they're there to help foreigners sell our people out. And you've got to be mindful of and be aware of, you know? Yep. yep, yep. So, I mean, like, like, as the saying goes, Braveheart said it earlier on, all skin folk ain't kin folk. And that's just undeniable. Just off the truth. Just off the truth. You know, you know, just off the truth. So, people beware, man. Beware of what's really going on. And it's throughout the Americas because there's maroons throughout the Americas, not just in Jamaica. You got Haiti, you got Cuba, you got Puerto Rico, all through all through the Antilles, the West Indian Islands, going into the rest of the Americas, the maroon tribes. But maroons, what does maroon mean? Wild like cattle, right? Wild, the wild people. They got nothing to do with slaves and these things. I, I put up etymology time ago. I ain't got to do that again, you know. Those that those that are tuned in or watch this, watch my live stream for a long time in first, you know, they they seen that. I'm not gonna bother do that. So what I was going to do is just do a little quick rundown of stuff that I collected over the time that I've done doing live streams about, you know, the free people of colour, because that's who we are, free people of colour. The American Indians are free people of colour. We were never slaves in the Americas. Facts. So I can find information from the 14th all the way down to the 19th century, calling our people free people of colour and calling us natives or the aboriginals. Facts. So this is real what we're talking about, about reclassifications, about paper genocide and these type of things by these corporations and by sellouts who chose to sell our people out. You know, so... um, yeah, this 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 is real. This is real. And this is why we tell people to do a genealogy. So what I'll do now, I'll just wait for him to come back. But before he comes back, I'll just give you a little rundown of some information that I would like to present to people. And um I'll give you the links as well. So those that are not aware are aware and privy to information that they should know um throughout the Americas. So this is gonna be the presentation that I've done, some have seen it on IG. And some I have not seen on IG because they're not, you know, they don't follow my account IG or follow IG Brazil on IG, whatever the case may be. So those that have seen it already, you already know where it is. Um, let's get down to the nitty gritty. All right, let's give me a second um, and I'll uh, pull up some stuff first. All right, so let me go to streaming art. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, so can you guys see this? Let me know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's coming through on my end. You good? Seven twenty P H D stereo. Uh, uh, can you can it be can you like read it or do try to try suggest you um, blow up a bit more, Miss Dinka? Because the quality is not good of the picture because it's like from an old paper, so oh I'll just... yeah. you know what you oh. do, Miss Dinka, read it and move the cursor so everyone can be in sync with you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, I can't even do that. I've got to save it. But okay, I'll just read it anyway. So it's cotton pick, cotton grown in the British Empire. American Negroes for West Africa. A well-known American American cotton planter, Mr. John Wilson of Mississippi, le left Liverpool yesterday with Negroes for West Africa to start cotton growing in that country. They are proceeding to Sierra Leone and are hopeful of securing an allotment of land from the governor. Mr. Wilson has, gr has great hopes of cotton growing in Africa and states that he is in a position to take over from American, from America, hundreds of Negroes to take up cotton cultivation. Cultivation, cultivation so. Mr. Um, Inca, Mr. Inca, Mr. Inca. Could you possibly, could you, could you possibly rewind and come again? All right, cool. So cotton growing in the British Empire, American Negroes for West Africa. So this is what you're looking at now. It's from a paper. Yes. A well-known American cotton planter, Mr. John Wilson of Mississippi, left Liverpool yesterday with Negroes for West Africa to start growing uh, cotton in that country. They are proceeding to Sierra Leone and are hopeful of securing an allotment of land from the governor. Mr. Wilson has great hopes of cotton growing in Africa and states that he is in a position to take over from America hundreds of Negroes um, uh, uh, take up hundreds of Negroes of cotton cultivation. Right? And there you have it, straight like that. So he's taking Negroes from the Americas to Bubu land, uh, I mean Africa, and not the other way round that like they're predicating to us. So, oh yeah. Laters! Brave, yeah. if you're there, just give me one second, bro. I'll bring you back in a minute. Just give me one second. Um, can you see this one? Okay, Black Indians getting written out of history. Um, okay, okay, yeah, okay, that's better. Is that clear for you lot to see this? Much better, Mr. Inca, now that you brought it up like that. All right, thank you, thank you, Mr. G. So the process of becoming political correct in history books is becoming a process that will eventually write black Indians out of history. Case in point, current histories record that in 1619, the first African slaves arrived at the shores of Virginia. However, if you read the original report, the word African is not used. The report says 20 and odd Negroes, and again, you must Mr. remember... Inca, that Mr. Inca. Could, could you possibly, could you, could you possibly rewind and come again? The process of becoming political correct in history books is becoming a process that will eventually write black Indians out of history. Case in point, current history records that in 1619, the first African slaves arrived at the shores of Virginia. However, if you read the original report, uh, the word African is not used. <laughs> The report says 20 and odd Negroes, and again, you must remember that in the 1600s, Negro was the term that was being used for Indians. Check! By changing Negro to African, we would now assume that these slaves were from Africa, when actually the, these slaves came from the American West Indies. Did you hear about that? Thousands of indigenous Americans, Indians, were enslaved. Today, Negro has become political, politi uh, politically incorrect and is being replaced with African American. However, not all Negroes were African, many were Native American. Did you hear that? <laughs> if we continue to allow history book to change the word Negro to African American, Black Indians will eventually fade. 
uh, fade into non-existence. That's yes. slide. That's slide two. And is, on paper, though, because we yes. can never physically fade out of existence. Oh no, 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 no. That's just no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So this is regarding the Irish Negroes. I mean, I saw the video before. Now this is an article from a newspaper. I want to quickly read through this. So other stuff I want to get through. I want to see. I'm going to try to bring back. Uh, hold on. Give me a second. Oh, it's not back. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, Irish Negroes. Yeah. Black men in the West Indies who speak pro Gaelic and are Catholics. To the editor of the New York Age, under the Barbadians rule of Cromwell and his agents in Ireland two centuries and a half ago, some of thousands of Irish boys and girls, many of them of tender age, were banished to the West India Islands and sold as slaves to their tobacco planters. A tragic feature of Irish history which is recalled by a recent event in London thus noted by the Dublin uh, Freeman's Journal. A day or two ago, John Edward Quinlan, the black open-air uh, orator from the West Indies, was charged at Mary, uh, Mary Le Bon, London Police Court, with obstructions and declared that he was, at good, was as good as any white man. He certainly bore a white man's name for the Quin, Quin, uh, Quinlans are... Uh, a numerous class in Ireland. Some years ago, as the London Daily News relates, a vessel with Irish sailors on board uh, put into a West India port and a boat load of Negroes came out to meet it. The sailors were amazed to bear the Negroes talking to each other in the ancient Gaelic tongue. When did, the, when did they acquire the language, the, nature, the natural Con conjecture of the course was that the Irish language was taken to the West Indies by the thousands of Irish men and Irish women who were banished to the West Indies by Cromwell and sold as slaves to the planters there. And they preserved not only the language but the religion of the girl, as Mr. Edmund Downey, the Irish novelist, illustrates in a letter to the Daily News on the Quinlan incident. So if you are interested in the Irish Negro question, I could refer you to chapters 24 and 25 of Captain uh, Langwin's log, one uh, anecdote of his smoked Irishman, as he called them. I did not tell in the book on his first voyage with his crew, all the fossils bands were of the same kidney. The ship arrived in Portland, Oregon, one day in Holy Week, the crew asked him if they might go ashore as soon as everything was snuck on board. The skipper was fearful of losing his men and followed them. Unseen by them, they headed straight for a Catholic church and the skipper told me he was a quite, he was quite edited by the devotees of his crew as a, at a mass. It is said that e even still in parts of some of the West Indian islands, the Gaelic tongue is the language of many uh, natives. Boston Mass, uh, April 14, 1906. You know, this is the information we talk about, you understand? So I'll quickly breeze through and hopefully... Oh, you ain't come back yet. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. 